acquisitions uh, were hiring me, Gene Oakland, and Bobby Heenan. How hard was it to get Turner to open the checkbooks and spend some money? You know, it's, it's, inter it's interesting. People talk about or ask about or have opinions and write about me bringing in people like Bobby Heenan and, and, and Gene Okerlin and obviously Hulk Hogan. It all started with Hulk Hogan. And the perception and the narrative that so many people like to put out there is that all, all Ted Turner wanted to do is just write checks. He had all this money. He was going to dump all this money. He was going to try to put WD, WWF out of business. And, you know, Bischoff had all this money. He was an ATM. And here's, here's the truth that people don't talk about. When I took over that company, when I had actual oversight of the total budget and control of the company, it was a $25 million company and he was generating $25 million a year in revenue, and it was losing $10 million a year in the process. The company had never made a dollar of profit since Ted Turner had purchased it. Okay? The mandate was, this company cannot lose money any longer. And one of the first things that I did, for, from a financial perspective, is cut every cost I could cut. I literally made people go into their office, the senior management, go into their office and to, make, to, to prove a point, I made them go into their office one day and count their pencils and come back and tell me how many pencils and pens each one of them had in their desk. And people look at me like, what the hell, what is, what is that? Because it's your resources. If you don't know what resources you have, how can you spend other resources. We had to control all of our resources at that time. We couldn't just keep spending stuff without knowing why. It's one of the reasons that my tenure in that company started out as controversially, especially with talent, as it did, is because the first thing I did was shut down the house shows. That's why Bob Dew and I didn't really see eye to eye, quite frankly, because we were doing 140 or 150 or 180 house shows a year, and when you sat down and analyzed the financials on that, you look at each one and go, wait a minute, every time we go out the door, we're losing money. And you want to fix that by going out the door more. How the fuck does that work? I'm really not good at math. I suck at it. But I know that that was wrong. So the very first thing I did was shut down all the house shows. Until we built a television product that it created the need or the demand or the desire in the audience to go see those people live, it didn't make sense to go out in the arenas anymore. And of course the talent hated it. Of course they did. And I was, you know, evil Eric for, for making that decision. But they weren't looking at the finances. They were just looking at how it affected their lives. So that was one of the first things I did. Um, th as those types of cost-cutting measures started to work, and we went from a $10 million loss to looking like we were going to start to make some money. Those same people who were so anxious to pull the plug on the company were now kind of going, oh, fuck it. Uh, I guess it can kind of work, maybe. I don't think it will, but maybe. At least there was enough to turn. Not that Ted didn't, didn't really need a lot of defense at that time. He's still the guy calling the shots. But at least it was justifiable. And he started feeling better about things. So as we started creeping closer to breaking even, I don't remember what year it was, but 94, 95, mm -hmm. it was the first year I remember um, we, were, we, were make, we were about to make money. It was about the same time that I went to Ted through Bill Shaw and wanted to bring in Hulk Hogan. We were close enough and had enough success. By then, the Disney thing was actually working on a commercial level. The wrestling fans didn't really like it. But, but from a business perspective, it was starting to work. We were starting to contain our costs. We were eliminating a lot of the human resource issues that were so prevalent earlier. Then, it, then they started giving me a little more rope. So I wanted to bring in Hulk Hogan. And again, you have to just look at the timing of all of that. It was kind of like dominoes in a way. As we shored up all of our losses, started managing the company properly, brought in Hulk Hogan, which is a big risk, but everybody believed in it at the time. I was going to ask you, what was your reaction to that? It was pretty positive. Okay. It was positive. It was not a tough sell from, from a Ted perspective. And I do have a question about that, but go ahead. Brought in Hulk. Now people started really believing in it. 
so they started giving me a little bit more rope. Well, now they gave me the money to bring in Gene. Then they gave me the money to bring in Bobby. And with each one of those acquisitions, the ratings started getting bigger, the pay-per-views started growing, the arenas started filling up again. So, of course, my budget started getting bigger. But it was a slow...